if if you go more deep in my inside the, my journey, you're gonna see so many many reasons to give up. But that's what I want to say to everyone, to the kids, to the young. You, you really need to follow your dream. Whenever like you never know when when it's uh, gonna happen to you. Just never give up and uh, always need to trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and everything is possible. Hello, sobat hola bola. Saya am Marco Simic, and now I'm gonna talk about my career timeline. Yeah, I was uh, really, really into football from the young ages, and uh, I was like, in that that uh, moment, I was like, dream came true. But it uh, takes a, a big commitment because the the city was like very far from uh, the city where I live. That I was like uh, one hour thirty minutes with the bus, so I I supposed to go there every day. But I was so proud, I was so happy, and I was so committed, and I was really enjoyed. Yeah, as I said, like um, there was a big selection, so many many kids, very competitive. It was very hard to be chosen uh, to just a small group of the of the of the kids. They can uh, they can stay in academy, and also every day traveling. Like uh, the kid from seven eight years old. Imagine if you tra can travel if you must travel every every day for training uh, back and forth, like three hours. It was uh, very hard, but I was uh, really, really persistent, and uh, I success in this one. I was uh, invited from uh, the capital city team and Kazagreb to join them, and they offered me the scholarship, and also um, they want to bring me to live there. But I, that was mean that I need to leave my parents, and I need to move alone with 14, 15 years old. And, um, but I was uh, very confident in that moment. And I said to my parents, yeah, I want to try this. Yeah, it was going to be hard to live without you already so, uh, because I'm so young. But uh, I moved there to Enka Zagreb. I lived in a mess, like in uh, Indonesia, you know what is the mess of the club. And um, continue school there. At that time, this team was the best team in, uh, in the country. They had the best uh, young team in the country. And it was a really big, uh, big uh, award for me that they really want me and I choose, I, I want to go there and uh, that's how it was happened. I, I left, left my family, lived alone, see them maybe once in a month, but it was like football was my biggest love, so I, I choose to go there. I was uh, called by for Croatian national team a few times. Uh, the first time was under 19. I was still in a play in Croatia. Uh, I played for a uh, junior uh, in Enka Zagreb. I was the top scorer in the in the league, and uh, they called me for under uh, 19. You know, the Croatia has uh, so many talented players, and we are one of the best uh, football country in the world. The last uh, time we was the second in the World Cup, and uh, it was like uh, when they called me on the phone, I was like almost collapsed. So it was like an unbelievable feeling. And then after that, I was um, already in Russia, playing in Russia for Premier League. And uh, they called me for under 21, and it was even uh, even even bigger because uh, it was already just next uh, step to the, be the the senior uh, national team player. And uh, there was uh, probably when I remember now one of the happiest moments in my life because when you represent your country in a, in the football stage, it's really really something special. Yeah, well, it was my last uh, last year for the uh, junior team in in uh, Europe. It's a little bit different than here. Probably people need to understand there is like a few category. You play like under 10, then under 12, under 14, then under 16, and under 18. And there is the last. It's like under 18 till uh, senior. It's a young team. So um, in Croatia, two most famous team are uh, Dinamo Zagreb and uh, Hajduk Split. But I was playing in an uh, academy of Enka Zagreb, but that time we was very strong. And uh, this is the first time in the history that Enka Zagreb juniors uh, won the Croatian uh, first league. And uh, I was the top scorer of the league with 24 goals in just 24 games or something like that. Uh, that time the head coach of the first team of Enka Zagreb was uh, Miroslav Blažević. 
the football lovers will know him for sure. Ciro Blažević, this is the coach who led Croatia in the France uh, 1998. Um, they won the bronze medal with Davor Šuker, Zvonimir Boban, uh, Robert Prosinecki. This was the squad and he was the coach and he, that time he was a coach in Enka Zagreb and he chose me to uh, he chose me and called me for a senior team. They bring me to pre-season in uh, Turkey. In Europe, there is um, Antalya, the place in Turkey. There are a lot of uh, football teams in uh, mid-season, pre-season. They uh, move there for, 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 for uh, preparation. And so they choose me, they call me. I went there, also debut for the first team, score one goal against uh, Borussia. And then after that, there was some uh, offer in the contract for the long term, like seven years. But uh, my agent at that time had a different plan. Then uh, after that, I finished uh, in Russia. There was also the, the plan for me to go to Red Bull Salzburg that time. But yeah, the, that's what I already said. Maybe I should do a little bit different that time, stay in my main club, probably. But I chose to go to Russia and from there, everything also. There is a different story already. I change, uh, unfortunately, I change a lot of clubs. I start very well, but then I have certain problem in my career uh, with injuries and stuff. Then I, 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 I sometimes I had a long break and uh, I wasn't so patient. I want to immediately go back to my level and uh, to play on the top of the best club. And uh, yeah, I went to Russia with 20 years old, 21 years old probably, start to play for under 21 national team. I was called up from Dinamo Zagreb, the biggest team in, uh, in uh, Croatia, one of the biggest team in the region. They always play Champions League. They see me as a, their number nine. I was the future number nine of the national team. They promised me everything, uh, plan about my future. I went back there, then I had the center problem with injury. Nothing, the, the things wasn't, uh, went well uh, how I planned and I want to rapidly go to the, to the better level. I also change a lot. But the good thing about that, yeah, I learned about uh, um, different culture. Every, every, every city, every country have something different. I learned some languages. I learned English. I learned Russian language when I was playing Russia. So there is a lot of good things that these uh, changes bring to me. But now uh, the, my journey bring me to Asia. And uh, first I was in Vietnam, then I was in Malaysia, and finally Three and a half, four years ago, I came to Indonesia, and um, to be honest, in Indonesia, I found myself. Finally, feel uh, like a second home, and um, and also can uh, express myself most and uh, give my best. Yeah, there was like um, there was a certain period that my career wasn't uh, went well anymore in Europe. I have some break there and um, I want different challenges. There was the option to go to Asia to play in Vietnam. I went to Vietnam and actually it was a nice experience. I love the city there, there where I live. And the first year there was very successful. I, was, I became the first European player ever, won V-League, Vietnamese League and the Cup. So I made double in the first season, it was very nice. And I have good memories from there. I was uh, already like, I uh, didn't have a club that time, also didn't have money. And then when I traveled to Asia, to Vietnam, I should go for trial first. And then I uh, didn't have a uh, money for ticket even. And my, my, my parents also couldn't help me though. So we need to try to find the help. So I found my friend who helped me and uh, borrowed me money for the ticket. And I went there and after that, like, I can say that uh, I success a little bit and then I could pay him back <laughs> after a few years. You know, in Asia, it's like uh, when you come to one, one club, you have the many, many example in uh, Indonesia where the player just come and go, stay for, for a while. So they always sign the contract for very short term. So I had the contract in uh, Vietnam for one year. Then I was in another club for a little bit while, my contract expired, so I was looking for the other clubs in Asia. And then there was Malaysian offer, so I moved to Malaysia and I continued there and I found it well. It was a good move for me that time and I like it. Malaysia was completely different than Vietnam, a little bit more European, more Western, 
So I was a little bit more easier to adapt. The most important thing in Malaysia was the, the end of the, the season when I had offer from Persija probably. So I had a good, uh, good uh, season in Malaysia that I scored like 21 goals this year. And um, after this good, good year that people from uh, Persija recognized my performance and they offered me the contract. So I choose to come here. That's probably the best. I had a good season in Malaysia and there was a, I got three offer, two from uh, Malaysia and one from uh, Indonesia, from Persija. And um, when I look into the club and um, when I saw the history of the club and also the, the stadium, the supporters, then I was didn't doubt for a second. My parents told me, are you sure that you want to change the country again, the new culture? I said, yeah, I want to. I definitely want to go there. Even the offer from the Malaysian club was much, much better to me. But uh, I choose to go to Indonesia and never regret it. Uh, Persija offered me two years contract with... Uh, uh, there was like a lot of benefits if I perform well and uh, I take a risk. I was confident, I was so fit and uh, just came here and uh, I was surprised from the first moment and the motivation was unbelievable when I saw everything around the club. When I came to Vietnam, my performance wasn't so good. But after one year playing in Vietnam, then I moved to Malaysia, my performance was very good. Then even when I moved to Indonesia, it was much better. So that's why the, I fit here. Like, of course, there was a unbelievable support from the fans the motivation, the adrenaline they give you, it cannot compare to anything. So, of course, it's completely different to play uh, with, with that amount of defense. Every player much, uh, is much, much better, give much more and uh, push through the limit. So now also when we play the game in Piala Mempora, there is no fence, it's completely different. Sometimes it's very sad. It's not easy to, to motivate like before when you come out to the stadium and you see the full uh, full stadium, like 80, 90,000 people full of crowds. So it was completely different. So I fit in Persija with a good coach. Coach Teco was here. He helped me a lot to adapt to Indonesia, to know about the Indonesian culture, about the Indonesian player culture. I think there is a lot of reason that's why I also fit so well. Yeah, the biggest lesson always, like I say, uh, whatever happens, you you cannot give up. Uh, because look at my story. Uh, I was already, I was at the top, then I was at the bottom, top again, bottom again. I could uh, give up so many times. Uh, if, if you go more deep in my inside the, my journey, you're gonna see so many, many reasons to give up. But that's what I want to say to everyone, to the kids, to the young. You, you really need to follow your dream. Whenever, like, you never know when when it's uh, gonna happen to you. Just never give up, and uh, always need to trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and everything is possible.